This is the Shan and Cheryl Show on Hot FM. I don't know oh, no guy to do it like us. Oh, come on, here we go. Joined today by a man called Jeremy Wade. He is the host of a show called River Monsters. The next season previews on Discovery Channel on the 8th of July. Welcome, Jeremy. So, what is the show all about? What's River Monsters? River Monsters, it's about... Uh Large fish mm-hmm. in rivers. Actually, so, so, uh, yes, <laughs> why, why question, should I question watch one. that? Why should you watch that? The reason you well, I mean, th- they're not all large, but the thing, the thing about ri- the fascination for river about rivers mm-hmm. for me is the fact that what lives there is actually very unknown, or it was unknown until we started doing the the, the program. And the the big difference between rivers and the sea is that generally you can see what's in the sea. And starting with uh, Jacques Cousteau back in the sixties, mm-hmm. you know, he. Went Went down there with a camera and his, and his team, and, and you know we're all very familiar with what lives in the sea. Rivers, it's different because we can't see what's there. You put somebody in with a camera, they they, they can't really film anything. Right. The, the, so the only way you find out what's there is what I do is putting a line in, and the stuff looks a lot. It's, it's a lot stranger looking in, in rivers because they, you know they're living in a, in a world where you don't use eyesight very often. So you have things with big tentacles hanging mm-hmm. off them, mm-hmm. uh, and there's also you know the fish there are a lot larger than people know. I've I've caught. You know, a, a lot of fish which are actually significantly bigger than me. Wow. Um, so, so people, you know, so I get surprised by what I find there, and, and you know, what I do with, with the program is share my surprise with the viewers. Mm. Yeah, a lot of the fish look very prehistoric, mm. scary, really. Like the ball cutter I was reading about. Uh, Hold up, there's a fish called a ball cutter. It's called the ball cutter. I'm scared to ask, but why? In Papua New Guinea. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's what they call it in Papua New Guinea, and uh, uh-huh. the you know the language they speak in Papua New Guinea is it, very direct. It's um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and this was uh, a lot of the things that we look into are sort of quite ancient myths. But this was something actually that it's it's fairly recent, just the last twenty years. Something appeared in the water there, and um, we we came across a report of of somebody allegedly being castrated and bleeding to death. <laughs> Um, we Nasty. we went we went there and we spoke to a guy who'd who'd been bitten on the on the foot, and he said this you know the bite it looked like human teeth marks, mm. and people were understandably quite frightened, uh, and and they were putting it down to you know they said there's nothing that we know of in, in the water that can do this, and and people believed it was made some kind of spirit. Mm-hmm. It turns out uh, it's a fish that is that, that was introduced from the Amazon. Papua New Guinea has very few native freshwater mm-hmm. species, and so what they did is they introduced this this fish called a paku from the from the Amazon, mm. and it's partly also to stop people hunting the crocodiles there, which were which were declining, and, and it, you know the crocodiles w- were sort of keeping the water channels open. Quite a sort of a complex um, sort of e- uh, ecological story. But uh, if you want to see pakus, if you want to see bull cutter, they've got them at River Safari here. They're, 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 there's a few of them swimming around in the uh, in Singapore in the River Safari. Yeah, oh. but, I, but I think they feed them. You know, their diet is more conventional. They're actually vegetarian normally. <laughs> right, uh, they, they, but they, they not. I think. They eat nuts, <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. No, for real, Shen. Like, they do, yeah. Like seeds and nuts. You're making me and every male <laughs> listener uncomfortable right now. Lots of leg crossing going yeah, on in Singapore. Yeah. I'm sitting right next to Jeremy Wade, who actually caught this fish, so I have to ask these questions. How did you catch it, though? I mean, is it the same um, I think I caught strategy? The, the, like, well, I caught one on a bit of coconut, I think. It was... Um, wow. So they I, do like nuts. They do actually yeah. like nuts. <laughs> yeah. the, bigger the, the bigger the better? I suppose. The hairier like, the better, perhaps? If he's that hungry. Up to a... It depends. The, the thing, uh, you know, it's... it's it, one of the things that we sort of delved into is you know, basically the whole thing about invasive species or, or if you take one type of, of animal and you put it somewhere else it, it might seem like a good idea at the time mm-hmm. that, that, but there's often these un, unintended consequences mm-hmm. and the thing is once you've actually done it you can never you can never turn back time mm-hmm. the things the, the things are there for good and, and you know and sometimes yeah sometimes their behavior their diet changes in a way that you you didn't exactly wow. expect so when you're searching for these fish and monsters are you looking to catch kill and eat them or what's the aim i'm looking to catch them and then the thing that i do which which most people understand actually is is i just put them back in the water i show them to the camera and then put them back in the water and mm. the, the reason i do that I've, i think i've had about three people ask me in six years why do you do that this fish that you know might bite somebody on the leg or whatever why do you put it back in the water <laughs> and um 
my the message I try and get across is it, is it was probably the person's fault for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And so what I'm trying to do is inform people that these creatures are there because mm-hmm. a, a lot of us don't know that they're there. And also something about the behaviour. I mean, some, some fish will go for people because the fish is protecting its young. For instance, snakeheads that you have here, they, you know, that they, they defend their young very, very enthusiastically. Mm-hmm. Um, something like a stingray, uh, normally that's only going to stab you if you step on it. Um, so there's a way you can walk. Uh, you sort of shuffle your feet instead of plonking your feet down on top of it. So, you know, there's things you can do. Um, so it's not about killing the fish. I do like eating fish occasionally, though. Um, <laughs> talking to stingray, I, I had curry stingray the oh, other night because right. everybody told me I must have that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I will, you know, as a rule, I, I will only eat fish if I know that there's plenty of that particular fish where it, where it came from. Fish, fish are having a hard time at the moment. You know, the numbers are going down. Mm. So, which fish would you not eat? Obviously, shark's fin is a no. Yeah, I would, no, I wouldn't eat, wouldn't eat shark's fin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of tuna uh, are sort of, you know, their their stocks are going down. Mm. It's it, it the trouble is it's very, you know, we live in this information age, but it's actually very hard to find out sometimes where your food came from. That's um, true. You know, one good thing we have in the UK is that you know that there's there's starting to be a sort of you know you can you can if you look you can find a certain label on mm-hmm. your you know on on your on your, your your tin to tell you that this this comes from a system sustainable source that you know that's that's all moving in the right direction i like to see you know i like fish but i, I think it's 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 something i eat occasionally and and i enjoy it when i eat it mm. have you ever been badly hurt filming this show yeah i have yeah i was um probably the worst injury i had was something called from a fish called an arapaima it lives in the amazon it's it's said to be the largest freshwater fish species in the world nobody knows for sure what is the largest freshwater fish species in the world but that's that's a, that's a likely contender and it, it doesn't have particularly big teeth. It's not always about teeth. This is a fish that's very, it's very powerful. It's very muscular. It has a hard head, and the the males will sometimes fight each other at the, the breeding season. And sometimes the loser of the fight will actually die. That's how how, how wow. you know how strong the Vicious, impact can be. Yeah. And I was I was hit in the chest by one, <gasps> mm. and I, I I was still aching after six weeks. And they've what? got they've they've got those at the river safari as well. Mm. They've, um, mm. I was swimming around. Trying to feed those, but being a little bit cautious because you know I, I have a little bit of history with them. Do you ever get scared though when you encounter these? I do uh, get. River I, I do get scared, and, and I think the, the one of the themes of the program it, it is all about. It's about fear. It's it's you know there's there's big stuff there under the water which we can't see, and what I say about fear is it, it's actually. Actually, being fearless, you're not going to last very long. No, it's yeah? kind of stupid and exactly. foolish, right? So, so yeah, so 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 fear is is about. It makes you pay attention. It makes mm. you find out about what it is you're going to confront. So yeah, I get I get scared, but then but I work my way through it. Mm-hmm. So in this upcoming um, episode or season of River Monsters, uh, what kind of monsters can we expect? More well, but ball cu- uh, ball cutting ones or <laughs> the, well it's, it's funny that seems to be a bit of a theme there there is um, that the, yeah there's, there's there's one fish that we well, or a story we looked into in Argentina but by the way all, all of season six is set in South America that's, okay. that's a, a you know a region I've spent a lot of uh, time and we heard about a very unfortunate young man who had his uh, genitals partially severed by something in the water now it wasn't a it wasn't a piranha because a piranha uh, makes a very clean bite this was something that was a bit more untidy, a bit jagged. Sorry, we're here again at this yeah. time. And, um, I'm feeling yeah. so unwell right now. So I can, okay, so yes. there's that, and then there's, there's that. Any, other, yeah, exactly. any other fish? Um, yeah, I mean, it's not always about size, but there's a, there's a, there's a couple of uh, a couple of programs where I end up getting something you know, very substantial. There's a couple of very large fish. Um, we go very remote. I go to visit this Indian tribe called Matisse in, in, uh, in Brazil, on the edge of uh, on the border with Peru and that's you know one of one of the most uh, remote places where we went which very much concentrates your mind because if anything goes wrong you, you know you can't get help that is, there's that mm. feeling of remoteness and one of the river monsters that I go after is actually not a fish hmm. um, there's you know there's other stuff down there Really? As well as fish. Scary. So, mm. Okay, well, uh, River mm. Monsters is going to be on the Discovery Channel on July the 8th. Look out for that. And thanks so much for being with us today, Jeremy. It's been a pleasure. It's been lovely to be here. Thank, Thank you. you, Jeremy. Come on. Get up, get up, get up. This is the Shannon Cheryl Show. Yeah, yeah. We do what we do on Hot FM.